Hello everyone! This time I'm trying something different in my videos. Please let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of this kind of content. So without further ado, let's get started. In today's video we are going to explore the history of Wurlitzer pianos. The Rudolf Wurlitzer company, known for its slogan Everything Musical, was founded by Rudolf Wurlitzer after he immigrated to America in 1854 and established his first business in New York City. He then moved to Cincinnati in 1856 and became a successful seller of pianos, organs and musical merchandise. Wurlitzer's success allowed him to build the House of Wurlitzer, a large factory with magnificent showrooms in 1861. During this time, Wurlitzer primarily manufactured organs and melodians, while importing other instruments from European makers to sell under the Wurlitzer label in America. In 1890, the Rudolf Wurlitzer company was established, and Rudolf's eldest son Howard became a partner. Sons Rudolf H. and Farney Wurlitzer soon joined the business. By the turn of the century, Wurlitzer had become a specialist in producing some of the first coin-operated player pianos and orchestrions in the United States. Rudolf Wurlitzer retired in 1906, and his sons took over the company. In the 1920s, Wurlitzer offered a wide variety of mechanical musical instruments in addition to its traditional pianos and player pianos. A common Wurlitzer employee in the 1920s, who worked 10-hour shifts, was paid 20 cents per hour. By the early 20th century, Wurlitzer controlled several brand names, including Apollo, Julius Bauer, Melville Clark, Tecaub, E. Wood, Farney, Kingston, Miriam, Strad, and Underwood. After the Great Depression, Wurlitzer produced several lines of spinets, consoles, and baby grand pianos well into the 20th century. The prominent Wurlitzer company continued to manufacture pianos until the 1990s, when the Wurlitzer name was sold to the Baldwin Piano and Organ Company. Wurlitzer Hall was the home of the Wurlitzer University. Students from around the world would come and learn Wurlitzer's essential product features and sales techniques. The Wurlitzer company was the only music company that had its own university. Thanks for watching, and please let me know in the comments if you know some other interesting information about Wurlitzer not mentioned in the video.